brick cavity walls are so misunderstood, even by the pros. This video tells you to seal your cavity. I think it's a big mistake. There's so many reasons why you always vent the cavity. So let me show you why. A brick cavity wall consists of outer leaf, usually a non-load bearing facing brick, then an air layer called a cavity, and then an internal, primarily load bearing layer. Previously it would be common brick, and more recently block work, which hopefully incorporates a layer of cavity insulation as well. And this cavity evolved around the 1920s, I think, to deal with the issue of damp transfer from outside through the solid wall, since all masonry is porous, and all brick is porous, so when moisture gets through the outer layer, the moisture will run down the inner face of the outer leaf, keeping the inner leaf bone dry but the experts are telling you to seal this cavity, calling it the truth, and that really worries me. I'm going to confuse you by telling you to always avoid having a sealed cavity and ventilate and weep it instead. And to unconfuse you, I'm gonna explain clearly here the reasons why. Now, I made a video about brickwork mistakes where I explained that you need to vent the cavity along with a whole load of other mistakes I see it with regards brickwork. And I received the same criticism I often get when I make these videos from those that are in the trade. I'm an amateur, I've got no experience, never on the tools, how many walls have I built, and so on, and that the cavity should be sealed. Sealing your cavity is the wrong advice and what I'm going to tell you here will help you avoid future damp problems and you can instead use your cash in the best way possible when you're improving or building your house. Or you can at least watch me for an alternative take to give you a broader perspective. The first issue is when you put a window and a door and, or any opening into a cavity wall and you have to close your cavity then and add a cavity tray. You do this to make a moisture block between the inner and outer side along with some rigid insulation otherwise you've got a horrible cold bridge you're going to get mold and damp and that's what so much of the housing built in the 60s 70s and 80s is suffering from now if you've got a cavity tray or a cavity closer in older properties with a dpc and you have sealed your cavity as these experts are telling you how is the moisture that's running down the inside of that outer leaf going to escape well, you can see it can escape. It's going to build up here and we have interstitial moisture, which is insidious because we can't see it until it's too late. It's the thing that has been killing our housing stock in these damp climates. And it's not just me saying this stuff. This is the guidance from the NHBC. These are the folks that underwrite the 10 year warranties for housing. Some of the experts argue engineering and super dense bricks such as this doesn't allow any water in so you don't need to bother. They claim that no water gets through the outer leaf. Same argument for builders telling me a cavity tray isn't needed at an abutment. The majority of housing is constructed with porous non-engineering brick anyway and even when it is dense brick it's still porous. The transfer is still always going to occur through the mortar for an older brick home that's a breathable line mix but more likely a cement mortar mix these days and as your mortar mix always needs to be less dense or weaker I guess it's another way of saying it than the structure it's binding together the driving rain can migrate through there even one day of driving rain is too much if the water can't escape if you seal a void there's no evaporation no micro drainage and you've got a damp and rot magnet above your window and door heads you need weep holes above your cavity trays that are going to allow micro drainage and automatically create a vent now sealing your cavity allows you to take advantage of air as an insulator right it's mentioned in the skill builder video as a principal reason to seal the cavity and i need to debunk this idea that the air cavity is relevant for keeping you warm in this context. While air does have insulating properties, a trapped hair in your lamb's wool jumper to keep you warm as an example, or a moose hair, which is actually a hollow hair that's got trapped air. In the context of sealed air inside a two inch or 50 millimeter cavity, making a noticeable difference for our comfort, well, it's a nonsense, and here's why. The current UK building regulations expect U values well below this for walls, and that thermal constraint is so large, without getting into the technical jargon of it, the contribution of any air is a complete irrelevance as an insulator in that context. 
Well, what about older properties where there might be little to no cavity wall insulation? If I do a U-value calculation between a cavity wall with a sealed cavity and exactly the same wall with no cavity or a ventilated cavity for that matter, the difference in U-value is negligible. The 50 millimeter unventilated gap gives a U-value of this. And that sounds like a modest improvement over a ventilated walls, 1.75. But in the real world, that only translates to a tiny half to one degree centigrade. And that is only on the inner surface, so not the air. So if you were rubbing your hands over the wall, you might feel a difference. The air temperature inside the room, you're never going to notice, and especially not with the heating on. The reality is we design our new homes and renovate our old housing stock using insulation to increase internal room temperatures and surface temperatures. We don't rely on air. And for an old brick house in the UK, you'd always be adding insulation rather than relying on the concept of trapped air within a sealed cavity, since our goal is meaningful heat retention in winter. A 50mm sealed cavity is it's not relevant. There is then the mention of air whistling around the cavity as if it's a bad thing. Well, we want air whistling around that cavity because we want that air movement. We want to use all means possible to keep that inner leaf bone dry and deal with the inevitable vapour leaks and where there are any snots or other unseen and unwanted cavity bridges. It's the inner leaf and its connection to the wall and floor elements that you want to seal along with an air tightness and controlled ventilation whole building strategy. If you want a bit more clarity on these concepts of vapour control, cavity design, U-values, calculating insulation and getting your DPCs right, you can talk to me on the link below. Now let's talk about air bricks and the argument that these are simply to vent the solum under the timber suspended floor. Air bricks are indeed installed to vent the solum as I've described elsewhere on the channel, but if you look at these streets all over the north of England, entire districts full of brick terraced homes, they were often built with solid floors because at that time, for example, after the Second World War, there was a big shortage of timber and solid floor was not only quicker, but it used less timber. You'll still see air bricks in these buildings. And why is that when there's no solum? They're placed to ventilate the cavity since the aim was to keep the internal leaf bone dry with air movement. Evaporation was a key component of the cavity, even then, to keep the inner leaf dry and you needed both an air gap and air movement to allow the cavity to evaporate the residual moisture coming through the outer leaf. Sealing a cavity actively prevents evaporation, which in turn is opening the door to damp, since any trapped moisture can't evaporate. Now, do we want to see cavity closers at the eaves, or is it only relevant to a sealed cavity? Well, I'll expect to see a cavity closer at the eaves, because we want to be closing off these voids from the roof space for a variety of reasons. Fire breaks, tying the leaves of the, the wall together, stopping dust accumulating and falling into the cavity. Sealing the cavity is not one of those reasons. You live in a two or three story house you're going to have cavity breaks after the disaster that happened in London legislation has become super strict with regard fire spread within the wall cavity between the stories and you need fire barriers for all your new extensions and house builds intumescent non-flammable lumps that expand in heat and actively block smoke and flame so to slow down any fire spread to the upper floors through the wall and at all your cavity barriers, you need to get rid of the moisture that's going to collect above them, just like the cavity trays around your openings we discussed earlier. You need weep holes to let the water drain out, so you can't seal your cavity. Otherwise, like the window openings, where's that moisture going to go? Nowhere. Welcome in damp. Now, with the advent of higher and higher U-values for building regulations and codes, which in turn means thicker and thicker, insulation within the cavity. The more insulation you have within a wall element, the greater the requirement to ventilate since regardless of the position of your calculated dew point, you're going to have bigger and bigger temperature differentials, especially at the weak points. So you have a greater potential for localised dew points where vapour has escaped. You always ventilate on the cold side of your insulation where you have a cavity to mitigate for this condensing risk. A sealed cavity is a crazy concept in a modern high insulated cavity wall scenario. 
Now we always need to take account of workmanship in the real world of construction, especially in smaller one-off projects where you don't have the benefit of repetition to get perfect snots, badly constructed DPCs, wall ties that are squint, poor vapour quality control. You need evaporation to be in effect within that cavity to mitigate the sloppy workmanship along with the other quality control issues I discuss in this video. And you're not going to get that with a sealed cavity. If your cavity wall is 40 years old, no insulation to worry about, no cavity trays or bridges, you still need evaporation to be in effect to keep these in a lees bone dry. A sealed cavity is the wrong advice, don't do it. If you're building from scratch, you should be using timber frame for your inner leaf anyway. It's far superior in cost, speed and quality and it's now a requirement of the building regulations that these cavities are fully ventilated for the very reasons I'm discussing here. Now I sympathise with you, it's a minefield when you're trying to understand the ins and outs of building construction when you've got experts telling you to do one thing and then someone like me comes along tells you the opposite. Listen to the trades professionals and even random YouTube people like me who understand that your edge is the main stakeholder in your own home build projects over the experts. Your skin in the game means you'll have the motivation to research and understand everything from first principles, which is a big advantage over the doing it this way for years way of thinking. And if you do question someone and you get an aggressive or defensive or dismissive answer in return, which is sadly very common from some in the building industry and on the YouTube platform, you know you're on the right track. There is definitely no stupid questions in building and nobody has all the answers. A lifelong questioning and learning approach will save your cash and will add value to your life when it comes to self-build and home improvement through increased house equity and through satisfaction at seeing through the noise.